Hi everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, we're going to look into how to create this um, slow motion rain effect that we see on the screen right now. Uh, so this is for a demo app we've done for a customer. Uh, so we're going to go through how to build this with Mendix uh, with a little bit of custom uh, CSS. So I'm going to start a new Mendix uh, project. Opening the Mendix modeler, creating a new app, choosing a blank one. Gonna call this the rain app. So the first thing I want to do on this project is install Gulp, and Gulp uh, will help me recompile my SAS code into uh, CSS, so that I can see what I'm doing instantly. So I'm going to go and find it on the web. Um, gulp. If you type just gulp mendix, you should find what you're looking for. So let's look at this here. You have some instruction. You follow that link on GitHub, and then you should be able to download. Um, this is what you're after here, uh, gulp.zip on GitHub. If you open that up, you, this is what you're after. This is uh, just a JSON file that will contain all the dependencies for what you need to install. So I copy that and then I'm going to find my project directory and copy it in there to install it. So if I go project, show project directory in Explorer, and then I'm just going to copy that here. And so now I just need to install those dependencies. So I'm going to open uh, a new console. I'm going to go CD just basically navigate to here and now I'm going to run npm install and and I'm just going to get npm to install um, everything that it's found in that uh, JSON package Everything is installed for us, so I'm going to run the project, run it locally, um, should create the database first if you haven't done it yet. And while I do that, I'm also going to run now gulp dev. So with this and my project running at the same time, it should now open a new Chrome window with my project. Great, so this is the project as it is now. If I try and make changes uh, in my theme folder, so let me navigate there. So the project, uh, show project directory in Explorer again. I go to theme, styles, and then let's look at the custom SAS. I'm going to open this with Visual Studio. There's two files in there, uh, one holding my custom variables, and the first one I'm going to open is my custom SCSS. Um, I'm going to uh, first give it a go and see if my connection is working. So I'm going to change the color of the body. Let's see if that works. And I can see here it's automatically recompiled the code and I can see my, my website is now green. So that's working great. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to create a new file to keep it clean. And I'm going to call this login.scss. 
and then in the custom CSS file I'm going to create an import to the login file and save that and again I'm going to see if that's working background color red full as well if I save that now it's red so it's working I can, I can work in that file um, so the first thing I want to do in my project is to create a layout and I'm going to call this login layout and that's just going to be an empty layout for my page so I'm not going to do anything there I will also create a page and this will be the login page it will be blank and it will be on my login layout okay I'm going to remove this here and add a new container this container will have a class that will call background image I'm going to copy that now I need to make sure I can navigate to that page so in navigation I'm going to change my default home page and here as well right so I'm going to run that again and if I go back to my browser window and refresh now I have nothing so I have an empty page with an empty container okay so now if I go back to Visual Studio, I can start creating my class. So background image, I'm going to remove any padding and any margin. And I'm going to select an image for the background image. So if I go back to the browser and I go to unsplash.com, search for pictures of rain in London. And some great pictures that would work here that I already selected one and all I need is to copy the URL for that image so this image address so copy that and back here I put back ground image and then I just put in the URL between brackets and I also need to give it a size and I'm going to put in a height of 100% now I also don't want it to uh, scroll down so I just want it to take the, the size of the screen and nothing more so I'm going to say overflow hidden and then I don't want it to repeat if it's too small and with this I think we are good to go uh, what I will do is I will just center it so what this does is if I reduce the size of my screen then it will always adjust the photo so that it's correctly centered and I save that so that Gulp can recompile for me. And if I go back here to my Mendix page, then this is it. I have an image for my background. Now I don't want to see it full size. This is for mobile. So I'm going to emulate that with Chrome by pressing F12. And this is what it looks like on mobile. So it's taking the whole space. So I think that's great. The next thing I need to do is add some static rain. Um, so if I go to Mendix, go back to my login page, this is the container that has the image and now I want a new container inside and this container will have the rain. So I'll give it a class and I call that rain and I can run this. Meanwhile, I'm going to create my class here, rain, remove any padding and margin um, and then find a background image so uh, let me go online 
What I need are some drops with a transparent background. So I'm going to go to pngimg.com and that's a data bank for PNG images with transparent background and look for drops. So I have a lot of choice here. I found one that was alright for this application. That's this one here. So I'm going to copy this link. Give it a height. Let's save that. And if I refresh here, I think those drops are a little bit larger than I expected, so I'm going to make it half the size. Let's say background size fifty percent. Try again. And here you go. Now you have some static rain. Now I need to animate this rain, and this is done with an animation in CSS. So I jump back to uh, Visual Studio. Going to create an animation called rain and so it's done this way keyframes rain and first i indicate what i want to have at zero percent of the animation so i create a zero percent tag and then i'm going to say what i want it to be at 100 percent so at zero percent i want the background position to be um, zero percent and zero percent, and then I'm going to copy that at a hundred percent. So at the end of the animation, I want to have moved vertically by a hundred percent. So what this says here is start the animation at the background position of zero, and then finish it um, all the way down the screen. That's our animation, and we now need to add it to our rain class. So animation, it's called rain. I want it to last 80 seconds, so it's quite slow. And I want it to be linear infinite, so it runs in a loop. So now if I save that and go back here, you can see our rain is falling very slowly down the screen and that's the effect we wanted. Now we could also speed this up Say I make it 10 seconds. Save. So now it looks a bit more like rain. Refresh. Right, so that, that's a little bit faster, uh, but that's not the effect we want. This is a slow motion that we were after, so 80 seconds was fine. Now we have some rain falling uh, at the right speed, so what we need is a form, a login form. So jumping back onto Mendix, this was my rain container, if you remember. I'm going to create a new container here. And that will be my form container. So I create a new class. You can run that. And then I'm going to create that class. So login container. I want it to be centered. So I need this rain here, this rain container to be a relative position. So this way I can create a absolute position here. And then I'm going to put it towards the top. And then towards the middle. Now I want to adjust this to its size.
and I want to give it a width of a little bit more than half of the size of the screen. Now, so that we can see where it is, I'm going to give it a color for now. But I'm going to call it red. So let me see if this appears now on the screen. And no, it doesn't appear. Uh, so what I need to do is give it a height. So now we'll give it a height of 100 pixel and save that. And that's great. That's that's where we want our container to be. So I'm going to add a few things on there now. I need to add my form. So go back to Mendix. This is the container for my form. The first thing I want to add is uh, login ID text box, so that's the username. Well, I don't want to show the label, and as a place uh, placeholder, I put user name. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a password text box. Same thing, the placeholder is password, and we don't show the label. And then we're going to add a login button. So sign in button. So let's create a few classes. So for those um, input, I'm going to call that uh, maybe in field. And this will be field. And this will be button. Okay, and let me run that. So uh, in CSS, I need to create a field. And for this field, I will remove the border. And the border radius. And that's just to give it a square edge. Then I will display block, and that's so that they'll go one under the other. Give it a height of 30 pixel, and I think that's it. Now for the button, I will again have no border and no border radius. I will create a width of 100%. A background color of black, and then a color of white. So I save this and let's see how it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to add some margin. To remove the height and the color of this and save and I think this is great the only thing I have left to do is to add a title uh, here at the bottom so back in Mendix I'm going to create two new containers or one new container and one title so this will be my uh, title container so I'll call it uh, title container and then inside there, I'm going to write the title of our app, which is stuff. And I'm going to give that a class of title. And again, I run this and jump back here to create my classes. So we have the title container, and then we have a class for the title. So for the title container, again, I want to absolutely position it on the screen, so position absolute, absolute, and this should be at the bottom, so I'll put it 75% down, and in the middle, so 50% on the left, but I need to adjust, transform, 
translate and it's minus 50 percent as before and i think that's it for the container and for the title uh, it's called uh, base white uh, the font size will be 60 pixel i will make it a bit lighter so i adjust the font weight font weight to 100 and then i'm going to put some letter spacing here of 20 pixel to adjust it slightly so let's see how this looks here in the browser and that's it I can see um, it's here at the bottom I can see the spacing looks nice between the letter and I think this is us done so thank you for following this tutorial any question please put it at the bottom